When the Reich fell, part of Hitler's automobile pool was seized at his residence in Berchtesgaden by General Leclerc's armored second division. Among the spoils of war was the famous Mercedes 770K. General Leclerc offered the ceremonial model to his comrade at arms, General de Gaulle. The liberator of France used it only once, on the 13th of June, 1948, during a visit to Nevers in homage to General Leclerc. That is because General de Gaulle preferred riding in Citroën tractions. One of them is preserved at the memorial to General Charles de Gaulle at Colombe les Deux Églises. Matthew Jaja, historian and curator of the museum, takes us on a tour of the vehicles of France's liberator. General de Gaulle used the traction at the time of the liberation of France during the period 1945-1946. In fact, until he chose to step down from the provisional government of the French Republic. And it was this car that was to accompany him during his 12 years in the desert. The Traction, the leading model of the French manufacturer, was launched in 1934. By turns the car of gangsters, the Third Republic, then the Gestapo and the Resistance, it is renowned for its road holding and its revolutionary technology. For the first time on a mass-produced car, the engine was positioned at the front. The front wheel Traction gave driver comfort and safety. It was Charles de Gaulle's companion from 1946 to 1948. And so it was aboard this same vehicle that he returned to power in 1958 when he was called by the President of the Republic. And this same car drove into the courtyard of the Elysee when he was nominated President of the Council. It's actually the car which symbolizes his return to power in 1958. From that moment on, it was to be expected that General de Gaulle should favor a replacement from the range when the traction ceased production to be replaced by the famous DS. One of the first measures he took when he arrived in 1958, I think in the days following his arrival, was to order DS cars. The DS-19, to be precise, it was to accompany the general for his whole life. This is his last DS, the one he used from 1962 until he left the Elysee in 1969. These days it belongs to Michel Offre, who collects the general's memorabilia. I knew of this car in 1979. It was bought by a friend who was already getting on in years. This friend decided to sell the car and I was able to buy it in 1992. The DS-19 was produced from 1955 on, right in Paris, in the Citroën factory on the Quai de Javel. It was designed by Flaminio Bertoni, the greatest car designer of the time. It was he who created the shapes of the 2CV and the traction avant. The DS was for 20 years the flagship model of the make, with over 1,400,000 cars sold. With its unusual line and its technical innovations, the DS became the mark of opulence and growth of the 30 glorious years. When it first came out, people thought it was very futuristic, a UFO even. They christened it the frog because of the shape of its bonnet. It was nothing like previous models of cars. The cars then were very square, and the traction was already a bit different with its prominent wings. Here, everything was encompassed. The wings were closed in, and people found it very peculiar. Many people were wary of it to start with, but even so, it was enormously successful right from the start. And it was utter chaos, because at the end of the first day of the Paris Salon, there were 7,500 firm orders. The DS seduced everybody and marked a turning point in technology. The real technical revolution in the DS was the hydraulic servo system. This allowed a whole system of equipment to function in a new and much more efficient way. The hydraulic servo system worked for braking, shock absorbers, and also for assisted steering, which was beginning to appear everywhere in cars. Hydraulic brakes, hydraulic steering, and most remarkable of all, hydraulic suspension. It replaced the usual springs. There's a mineral liquid, green in color, which circulates around the car. It is contained in five spheres, one sphere for the gasoline tank and four spheres connected to the wheels where it is mixed with liquid nitrogen. 
When the car comes to an obstacle, a pothole, for example, the wheels compress the gas by means of a piston. It's the gas that absorbs the shock much more effectively than a spring could do, so the car remains horizontal. Here is a demonstration using General de Gaulle's car. I turn the steering wheel with just two fingers. It's easy. Here we're coming to a bit of road where there are potholes. The car behaves very well for a 60-year-old. It's not bad at all. What generations of DS drivers found fascinating was the ability to regulate for themselves the rigidity of the hydraulic shock absorbers. Here we are in the lowest position. So now I'm putting it into the normal position. That's the position you use on the road. After that, depending on the difficulties and the state of the road, one can put it on position two or three. You see, she's rising fast already. She's rigid. And when there's a puncture, you put it in the highest position. The last one. Five positions, of which three are adjustable according to the state of the road. And for General de Gaulle's DS, Citroën provided a few adjustments, made to measure. The roof was modified by Chaperon, who gave him a big electrically operated roof. This allowed the general to stand up in the car and wave to the crowd. This car was used mainly for his trips around the country and some of his Paris journeys. The roof was raised by 10 centimeters to accommodate the general's height. In the front on the bumper, you can see the slot for two pennants, one which was added for the general's pennant, the other for the president of another country. The pennant is carried on a chrome-plated brass pole. And this one is the logo for General de Gaulle. It has the Cross of Lorraine on it. Each president had his own logo. General de Gaulle had a favorite place in this car, the back right-hand side. So you see, when he came out of the Elysee or out of the Boisserie, the car was always positioned in a certain direction, so he could get into his seat. But often when Madame de Gaulle was with him, he left her that seat and sat alongside. They were in these places when General de Gaulle's DS made history on the 22nd of August, 1962. On that day, at Petit Clamart, the car saved their lives during the assassination attempt. Since July 1962, Algeria had been declared independent. Nevertheless, some of the supporters of French Algeria could not forgive General de Gaulle for having accepted and followed through the independence of Algeria and intended to make him pay for it quite simply by making an attempt on his life, with the hope that this would defeat the regime of the Fifth Republic which he had created. That was the motivation of the OAS, the organization of the secret army, which stirred up unrest, prepared and directed this assassination attempt on General de Gaulle. It was 7.45 in the evening when the presidential motorcade, composed of two DSs and two motorbikes, left the Elysee heading for the aerodrome of Villa Coublet. Neither of the cars was armored. At 2020, as the car was approaching the Petit Clamart crossroads, OAS terrorists opened fire on the procession. Two tires were punctured. Some bullets went through the bodywork of the presidential car, but the two DSs managed to get away. 187 bullets were fired. About 15 of them hit the bodywork. A 10-man commando, 187 bullets fired into unarmored bodywork. With an incredible stroke of luck, the presidential convoy even managed to dodge another car aimed at it, which was also a DS. The vehicle nevertheless carried on for several kilometers until it reached Villa Coublet Airport, which led General de Gaulle to say a few minutes later, speaking of the terrorists who tried to kill him, that they really didn't know how to use a gun, or else their aim was lousy. And just for the record, you should know that there were chickens in the boot of the car. They were chickens for Madame de Gaulle, who once they arrived at the airport was anxious to know if the chickens were safe and sound. They all survived. 
There's no doubt that luck, the skill of the presidential chauffeur, Francis Mahou, but also the advanced technology of the DS-19 all saved the life of the President of the Republic. Eric Letton is manager of the Citroën Conservatory at Aulnay-sous-Bois, where there are hundreds of old models of the make with the Chevron emblem. To show the exceptional road holding of the DS, in spite of its two punctured tires, the technician has prepared a demonstration. He has reproduced the conditions of the assassination attempt using a standard DS-19, identical to the one used by the general. We've deflated the tires of both the back right wheel and the front left one to match the bullets which came and punctured the tires. There they are flat. There's no more air in the tires. In spite of two punctured tires on the car, thanks to the oleo-pneumatic or hydraulic suspension, if you prefer, the vehicle remains stable and the car's drivability and road holding are impeccable. And in my opinion, controlling a vehicle without the assisted steering, which existed at that time, would have been extremely difficult. Thanks to the hydraulic system, the general's car could even have lost a wheel and continued without damage. Now we've taken one wheel off the car to show that the car was capable of running on three wheels. In order to do this, we've put the car in the top position. As we saw just now, there were several height settings possible, so we've put it in the top position and we've made the whole thing rigid. So there everything is tight in the suspension and the chassis, so we can take away a wheel and still run like that. Sufficient reason to merit General de Gaulle's loyalty to the DS, in spite of some people wishing him to take an armored car. Following the Petit Clamart attack, it was suggested to General de Gaulle that he should take this vehicle, which is called a Renault Rambler Ambassador, proposed by the Minister of Interior, Roger Frey. But this was a vehicle for which the parts came from the United States before being assembled in Belgium, and General de Gaulle, who was not known for being pro-American, didn't appreciate this aspect and did not in the least admire the appearance of the vehicle. In addition, this vehicle was armored with bulletproof glass, as you can see from the weight and thickness of the doors, even though the bodywork had been designed by Henri Chaperon. There were also puncture-proof tires. General de Gaulle preferred to stay faithful to the DS-19, which saved his life on the 22nd of August, 1962, so much so that when this vehicle was presented to him, he is rumored to have said, where's my DS? Before adding that whoever ordered or paid for this vehicle should keep it and use it themselves, but that he, General de Gaulle, had no desire to use it. That's how he remained faithful to the DS until the end of his presidential mandate. The general kept his DS-19 until he stepped down in November 1969. He gave way on only one little novelty, the DS-21 in its stretched version, modified by the famous bodywork designer Chaperon and intended for parades. This car was ordered in 1968 and delivered in 1969. It's a ceremonial car, not one for everyday use. It's really for parades. It's really carefully designed for slow speeds. Six meters, 53 long, with a glass partition separating the back seat passengers from the front. So, the aide-de-camp takes his piece of paper, writes his reply on it, and puts it in this little letterbox so that the head of state in the back can collect it. This car, designed to receive foreign heads of state, offers all the signs of interior luxury. The first guest, Jean Bédel Bokassa, future puppet emperor of the Central African state, must have been impressed by it, as was Richard Nixon, the American president. The car was over-equipped, full of lavish extras for a head of state. But the general was really quite a simple man, and he preferred things to be done simply. Full of lavish extras, but still not armored, even after the Petit Clamart attack, not one of the president's DSs was made secure. It was as if the hydraulic suspension, which saved him once, was the equal of any protection imaginable. 
On the 9th of November, 1970, General de Gaulle, retired from public life several months before, breathed his last. For his funeral, at the head of the procession was his wife, Yvonne, in the DS-19. It is rare for a car and a make of car, Citroën, to be so closely linked to the destiny of a president. For a car maker, it's always beneficial to become known through the use of high-profile cars in prestigious situations. So we include in this category, for example, the motor cars of heads of state. <laughs> <laughs> 